New post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Nick, she said she locked all the doors and windows, but don't you think we ought to check them, just in case? You're right, Patsy. I'm going to check them right now. Good. Of course, I don't really believe this Indian lady. Ah! Wait! Nick, somebody screamed. Do you suppose... Come on, Patsy, hurry. Yeah, Locked, confound it. Well. Oh, Nick, look. Yes. But too late. She, she's dead. Yes, Patsy. With a red arrow in her heart. Now, the case of the red arrow. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. <coughs> As Miss Harriet Hartwell removes the hairpin from her iron-gray hair before going to bed, it's a stern, determined face that looks back at her from the mirror. The face of a woman not easily frightened, even by a sound heard often during the past few weeks in the historic old Hartwell mansion. Oh, for heaven's sake, not again. Where's that gun? Abby! Abby, what is it? Oh, I saw it again, Harry, in the doghouse. And there it was. Oh, fiddle, fiddle. I tell you, I saw him with the feathers in his hair and the bow and arrow. Oh, you saw nothing of the kind. Now, stop that noise. You too, Hannibal. You hear me, sir? What's the matter, Aunt Harry? Is it the ghost again? Oh, yes, Abby says she saw him again. I did. Here, Gerald, take the gun and look around. Okay, Aunt Harry. I heard the screaming. He's come again, ain't he? Never mind, Lisa. Go back to bed. I told you not to plow up that grave. He'll keep coming back until one Go night. Go back to bed, Lisa. Unless you want me to look for a new housekeeper in the morning. I'm going. But remember, I warned you. Now, Abby, you stop that blubbering right now. There's no one in the back of the house, Aunt Harry. Of course not. There never is. Oh, Harriet, Harriet, please. Let's get out before it's too late. What? Let a dead Indian run me out of my own house? I should say not. Perhaps you only imagined it. I did not. I tell you, I saw him. Oh, Harriet, listen to me. You can't fight a ghost. Oh, can't I, huh? Well, I'm going to make this particular ghost wish he'd never been born. Of course, you know, Miss Hartwell, chasing ghosts isn't exactly my line. Yeah, Nick, but maybe it would be interesting for a change. Well, maybe you have something there, Patsy. Tell me about the ghost anyway, Miss Hartwell. Well, the old Hartwell place is about 50 miles up the river. I see. And when my great-great-grandfather, General Absalom Hartwell, built it back in 1815, the Indians around that section were pretty riled about it. Why? Well, because they had a burial ground on the property and they considered it sacred soil. I see. Now, among the graves was that of Red Arrow, one of their greatest chiefs. Uh-huh. And the Indians warned that his spirit would come back to avenge the insult. And did it? Well, something did. Because one morning, the general was found dead in his bedroom with a red arrow in his heart. Right. And I suppose the ghost has been appearing ever since? Well, no. Not until I moved in three months ago. Oh? You see, for the past 30 years, no one has lived in the house but Lisa Mabry, the caretaker. Yeah. Now she's my housekeeper. Yeah, but I wonder why the big chief is on the warpath again after all these years. Well, according to Lisa, when I put in my rose garden, I accidentally had his grave plowed up. Did you ever see the ghost yourself, Miss Hartwell? Well, yes, one time. But when I threw a brass inkwell at him, he ran into my bedroom and disappeared. Well, what hmm. happened then? Well, I went right in after him, but there was nobody there, and all the doors and windows were locked. But both hmm. your housekeeper, Miss Abby, have seen it several times. Is that right? Yes, we've all seen it, uh, except Gerald. Gerald, that's uh, the nephew who was visiting you last night. Yes, mm -hmm. he usually comes out the weekends. That's Gerald right. is the only close relative I have, and he knows he'll get my money someday, so he tries to keep on the good side of me. Well, Miss Abby's a relative, too, isn't she? Oh, she's a second cousin twice removed, oh. but... Both she and Gerald know I'm not leaving her much. Miss Hartwell, what do you think a private investigator can do against a ghost? Ghost, my foot. Someone's deliberately trying to frighten me, and I want to know who it is and why they're doing it. Well, I'll tell you what. Patsy and I'll drive up there tonight, stay a few days. Good. But please, 
Don't tell the others who I am. Mm, whatever you say, Mr. Carter. From now on, it's uh, Professor Carter, Miss Hartwell. I'm a scholar who's interested in psychic manifestations, okay? Uh, very well, uh, Professor Carter. Oh, gee, this is going to be interesting. Yes, Betsy, but not only for us. With a little luck, I think we can make it plenty interesting for Mr. Ghost. <laughs> Yes, there is definitely an aura about this house conducive to psychic phenomena. Wouldn't you say so, Miss Bowen? Absolutely, Professor. Well, uh, it's 11 o'clock. I think I'll turn in. Yes, it's time we all went to bed. Oh, uh, did you take the dog out, Abby? Oh, yes. Hannibal and I had a lovely walk in the garden. Did Lisa show you your room, Miss Bowen? Uh, yes, thank you. At the head of the stairs. Oh, uh, your room is on the ground floor, Professor Carter. I thought you'd prefer that. Well, that's very thoughtful of you. Did I tell you that the ghost has never been seen upstairs? Why, no. How very interesting. Mm. Yes, that's why nobody but Aunt Harriet will sleep down here. Well, not all. Oh, wait a minute, Gerald. Hmm? I'm going up, too. I don't like to walk through the hall alone. Not after last night. Oh, Mr. Nesbitt. Yes, sir. You say that every time the ghost has appeared, you made an immediate search and found all the doors and windows locked on the inside. Yes, every time. I happen to be here on each case. Oh, imagine what would have happened if we'd been alone. That's what I was thinking. Oh. Well, good night. Good night. And uh, good luck with your ghost chasing. Uh, good night, Professor. Uh, good night, Miss Bowen. Good, good night, night, Miss Abby. Mr. Well, Nesbitt, I think I'll retire, too. Is there anything you need, Mr. Car uh, Professor Carter? No, thank you, Miss Hartwell. Patsy and I'll sit here for a while and watch for our friend, the Redskin. Well, I just hope you catch him. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Well, Professor, what do you think? It's hard to tell, Patsy. But the fact that the ghost always appears on this floor, and everybody but Miss Harriet sleeps upstairs, is a help. Yes, and this room you can keep an eye on the front stairway. And there aren't any back stairs. That's what I mean. They're all panned in. Even Miss Harriet herself. Hmm? There's only one door to her room, and I can see that from here. Oh, uh, what do you think of her, Nick? Miss Harriet? Oh, she's a great old girl. <laughs> I'd hate to be that ghost when she catches it. <laughs> That's the way I feel. Well, oh, Lisa, I uh, didn't see you come in. No. You and the professor was talking. Will you be wanting anything else before I go up to bed? No, thank you, Lisa. Did you lock up? Yes, sir. I tested every door and window. Not that it will do any good against him. You've lived here a long time, haven't you? Thirty years. Most of it all alone in this house, just like it was my own. And there was not never no trouble with him till she moved in. You mean Miss Harriet? I do. Moving the furniture around. Things that ain't been changed in a hundred years. Plowing up the burial ground. Bossing everybody like as if she was a queen. Well, if you feel that way, why don't you quit? Me leave this house? No, please. I got more right here than she has. And I'll be here after she's gone. What makes you think Miss Harriet will go, Lisa? She'll go. Chief Red Arrow will take care of that. You mean the way he took care of old General Hartwell? That ain't for me to say. I'm going up now. Good night. Good night. Good night. She's a pleasant person to have around. Yeah. Wonder how far she'd go to get Miss Harriet out of here. That's what I was thinking. You know, Betsy, this place must be worth a lot of money. Yeah. A collection of Indian relics alone are the finest I ever saw. And did you see those things upstairs? Helmets, suits of armor, crossbows, antique guns. Oh, you mean the European collection? Uh-huh. Yeah, Miss Harriet said they belonged to her grandfather. Most of them are museum pieces. I've uh, been thinking something, Nick, not to change the subject. What? Lisa said she locked all the doors and windows. Oh, don't but... worry. I'm going to check them myself. <laughs> what? what was that? Miss Harriet. Come on, Betsy. Yeah. Miss Harriet. Miss Harriet, what's the matter? Oh, Nick, she doesn't answer. Did you scream, Miss Bowen? No, it was your Aunt Harriet. Well, maybe she fainted. Miss Harriet isn't the fainting type. Oh, wasn't that Harriet Professor Carter? Yes, it was, Miss Abby. Oh. I found that the door's locked. Stand back, Betsy. I'll have yeah. to break it in. Don't you dare. I won't let you. You haven't anything to say about it, Lisa. No, no. Get away from here. Stop that. Get her off my back, Miss Bowen. Get her. Got it. No. Calm down, Lisa. Hey, Stop it. 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 With a red arrow to her heart. A red arrow, symbol of the long dead Indian chief, protrudes from the chest of the woman who dug up his grave. 
a woman who was alone in a room with every door and window shut. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now back to The Case of the Red Arrow, today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. Only a moment has passed since Nick broke into the locked bedroom to find Miss Harriet lying on the floor with a red arrow in her heart. There's only one door to this room, and the killer didn't come in or leave that way. I've been watching that. How about the windows, Nick? This one's locked on the inside. So this one, Nick. Then the killer must still be in the room. Oh. What's this door? That's a closet. If he's hiding there, he'd... No, nothing here but a few dresses. I tell you, it was Chief Red Arrow. He don't need no doors, no windows. He walks through the walls. You want to believe that, Lisa? Go ahead. But I don't take any stock in ghosts. Not yet, anyway. Really, Professor Carter, that's an odd remark for a man who says he's interested in psychic phenomena. I'm a private investigator, Nedra. Is it detective? That's right, Miss Abby. Nothing must be touched until the police arrive. Will you phone them, Patsy? Of course, Nick. Oh, I knew something awful would happen. I warned her. I begged her to leave this house. You should have known those were the wrong tactics to use on Aunt Harriet, Miss Abby. She hadn't ought to have come here in the first place, changing things around, throwing up graves. No ghost did this, Lisa. And no human being could have gone out and locked the windows after him on the inside. So it's someone who's in this house right now. Why, you don't mean one of us. That's exactly what I mean, Nesbitt. And I'm making it my business to find out which one of you it is. You expect to find a secret panel in the wall, Miss Carter? Could be, Sheriff. They all sound pretty solid. Oh, but Nick, secret panels. You don't find those things in real life. Uh, not nowadays, Miss Bowen, but this house is 133 years old. And the sheriff's right, Patsy. But there doesn't seem to be any panel in these walls. You know, Mr. Carter, maybe what we ought to look for first is uh, motive. Yeah. Well, first there's Lisa. She certainly resented Miss Harriet being here. They all had motives, Patsy. Except Miss Abby. Even she might have hated Miss Harriet. Hmm? Couldn't have been too easy living here as a poor relation. No, but she could always leave if she wanted to. Yeah, how about money? Miss Harriet was rich, and if Miss Abby thought she'd be the heir... No, Sheriff. Miss Abby knew that practically all the money goes to the nephew, Gerald Nesbitt. Nesbitt, eh? Yeah. Uh-huh. And Gerald Nesbitt is the only person in the house who never saw the ghost, even though he says he just happened to be here every time it showed up. That does look suspicious. Yeah. But just now, I'm interested in this arrow... Yeah, yeah, it looks, uh, looks like a homemade job. No stone arrowhead tied under a new shaft. Taped on, Sheriff. And very neatly, too. I've seen that sort of tape before, Nick. Dressmakers use it. You can get it at any dime store. I know, Patsy, but it's the way the tape is wound down that interests me. Huh? It's mm -hmm. a very distinctive design. Yes? Oh, Mr. Carter. Yes, Miss Abby. I, uh, left my glasses in here. Oh, there they are, Miss Abby. On the table. Oh, thank you. Mr. Carter, you don't really think that one of us... I'm afraid I do, Miss Abby. Oh, but we were all upstairs. Mr. Carter was trying to find a secret passageway in the walls, but uh, didn't get nowhere. Oh, I'm sure there couldn't be anything like... <gasps> Miss Abby, what's the matter? Oh, oh there he is again. He, 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 oh. Good grief, Carter. She's fainted. <laughs> Here, Miss Abby, oh. drink this. Oh, thank you. I uh, did. I faint. You said you saw something. Oh, oh yes, Chief Red Arrow's ghost. Where? At the window? No, no, no. In the closet. The closet, huh? Yes. Yes, the dresses moved as if someone were hiding there, and then, then I saw a hand. No, oh, you just imagined it. There ain't nobody in here. Oh, no. Oh, I saw it. Maybe this is what we're looking for, Sheriff. What do you mean, Nick? The walls in the room were solid, but... Listen. Hey, that sounds hollow. There's some clothes hooks on the back of the closet wall. Maybe if we pull one of them. No. Not this one either. Ah! By golly, right. A hidden stairway going upstairs. So that's how the killer got in and out. Let's see what it goes up to. Oh, yeah. Gosh, these stairs are narrow, aren't they? Say, what's that, uh, what's that laying there on the step? A blanket. 
and an Indian headdress with feathers. The ghost costume. Right, Patsy. Let's go on up. Yeah. No wonder we didn't see anybody using the front stairs. There's another door at the top. Yeah. Who was the leader? Apparently, we're in another closet. Here, let me push these clothes out of the way, and we'll go into the room. Stick, these are men's clothes. Say, what the devil? Where did you people come from? Well, you ought to know, sonny boy. What do you mean? Well, you come up here. Wait. Nesbitt, you were the first one to come upstairs just before the murder. Did you come directly to this room? Yes. Why? Did anybody else come through here? No, of course not. So, that does it, young fella. You're under arrest for the murder of your aunt. I know why you wanted me to come back out here this morning, Nick. I want to take a look at the outside of the house, Sheriff. Huh? Now, these are the windows to Miss Harriet's room. Yes, who was? Letha's room is on the other side of the house, the back. Miss Abby's windows are directly above here. And that's Nesbitt's room, above and to the right. Well, what difference does it make? We know he did it, and we got him safe in the county jail. Yeah, it won't hurt him to stay there for a day or two. It'll throw the real killer off Darn time. it, Nick. Nesbitt's the killer. Those hidden stairs were the only way into Miss Harriet's room. Yeah, that's right. And nobody but Nesbitt could have used them at that time. He admitted it. Right again. So the arrow must have been shot from outside the house. Through those locked windows? Not necessarily. Here. Look at this tree, Sheriff. Yeah? It's right in front of Miss Harriet's window. Not six feet away from them. Well, if you think one of the women climbed down that tree from upstairs, you're crazy. That isn't what I'm driving at. Here. Take a look at these marks on the inside of the place where it forks, about five feet from the ground. Yeah, that's funny. The tree forks three ways, and something's been pressed into the bark inside each fork. Yeah, something's been wedged firmly between those three forks, and recently. Right. Well, you can tell that those marks are new. Sheriff, did you ever see a crossbow? Crossbow? What's that? A medieval weapon with a stock like a shotgun and a bow mounted crosswise on the front end. Oh, sure, yeah. More powerful than an ordinary bow. And it can be aimed more accurately. Well, yeah, there's one in the collection upstairs. After it's caught, you pull the trigger to shoot the arrow. That's the weapon I mean. Oh, then you think that uh, crossbow was wedged in the fork of this tree pointing into Miss Harriet's room? I wouldn't be surprised. Could easily be pulled loose from the tree fork. And hauled into an upstairs window with a strong cord. Uh, And a cord around the trigger could pull the trigger by remote control. Well, maybe so, but still couldn't shoot through a closed and locked window without breaking it. You can't get away from that, Nick. Maybe not, Sheriff, but I'm doing my best. What are you two fooling around out here for? Suppose I ask you the same question, Letha. Isn't it time you were getting dinner? I'm doing the washing. Miss Abby always tends to the cooking on wash day. I see. That girl you brung with you is helping her, if you're interested. Uh, looking for something, Letha? I'm looking for my clothes prop. That's what. Somebody moved it. Now, wait a minute. I can't hang up my clothes. Clothes prop. prop. That's a pole about seven feet long, isn't it? Well, yeah. Used to prop up the clothesline and hold the clothes off the ground. Here it is. Now, how in the name of common sense did it get around here in the tall grass? Yeah, let me see that. I catch the one that threw it out here. Never mind, Letha. I'll catch that person for you. Come on, Sheriff. I've got the answer now. If you have another big knife, Miss Abby, I'll help you shred that cabbage. Oh, I'm almost through, Miss Bowen. But if you'd like to take a look at the soup... I better get a long spoon to stir it with. There's one in the drawer of the cabinet over there. Thanks. This one that's been mended? Yes. The handle came loose and I put some tape around it. <laughs> I'm very good at fixing things. What? Why, that's the same kind of tape that was used to make the arrow that... that... What did you say? Well... The way this tape is wound around the spoon handle, that complicated way, that's the same as what was on that arrow. I uh, Uh, wish you hadn't noticed that, Miss Bowen. It was you. You, Miss Abby. Yes, Miss Bowen. It was I. But you had no reason to kill her. No reason. 
How would you like to be a poor relation? Always taking orders, watching her buy the best of everything, and having to get along with nothing yourself. I made up my mind that I was going to have nice things, too. What? You killed her for the money? But surely you know that practically everything goes to Gerald. <laughs> Not if he's convicted of killing her, it doesn't. What? The law doesn't let the murderer profit by his crime. And I'm the only other relative Harriet had. I'll get it all. Maybe you would have, but now it... You won't tell on me, Miss Bowen. Well, you won't ever tell. Miss, Miss Abby, put down that knife. Mm -hmm. No, Miss mm -hmm. Abby, please. <laughs> Trapped in a corner of the old-fashioned kitchen, Patsy has no chance to get past Miss Abby as the old lady advances with a heavy knife in her hand. We'll see what happens in just a moment. And now, the conclusion of The Case of the Red Arrow. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. In the kitchen of the historic Hartwell Mansion, Patsy is alone with a murderess. A murderess with a heavy knife in her hand who advances slowly as she says, You won't tell on me, Miss Bowen. Well, you won't ever tell. Miss Abby, put down that knife. Well, no, Miss Abby, please. No! Let me cut if you don't mind. No, 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 I'll kill you, too. There you are. I'll kill you. All right, Miss no, Abby. No. Be a good girl. Let go of me. Might hurt yourself if you try to pull away like that. All right, I've got the knife, Sheriff. Hold on to Miss Abby, will you? Sure will. Nick, Nick, she did it. She killed Miss Harriet. I know, Patsy. I know. The sheriff and I were just coming in to arrest her. And she wanted Gerald to be blamed. That's why the ghost never appeared unless he was here. No, it was you who paraded around dressed up like an old chief Red Arrow, wasn't it, Miss Abby? Very well, I'll admit it. <laughs> Got the idea when Lisa warned Harriet that the chief's ghost would come back for revenge. And when I discovered that secret stairway... I knew just how it could be done. Yes. That stairway to Gerald's room made it appear that he was the only person who could have shot Miss Harriet from inside the house. When actually, you shot her from outside the window. But, oh, Nick, how could she do that? A crossbow, Patsy. What? Wedged in the fork of a tree outside the window. Fired by pulling a string, tried to the trigger. Then quickly pulled up into Miss Abby's own room with a cord tied around the stock. But I don't see how, how, how in the world... The arrow was aimed at the center of Miss Harriet's window. When Miss Harriet opened the window for the night, the light inside the room threw her shadow on the tree trunk outside. Oh. And that's when Miss Abby pulled the string. What a setup. Hey, what if we hadn't found that secret stairway, though? Then there wouldn't have been no evidence against Joe. You almost didn't find it, you idiot. What? Even after I put the blanket and headdress on the stairs for you to discover. So I had to pretend I saw something there. So you'd look closer. Well, Miss Abby... I got a nice cell waiting for you down in my jail. Oh. Awful sorry there ain't no secret panel for you to monkey with. But I guess you'll make out somehow. Nick, I still don't see how Miss Abby managed to close that window after shooting Miss Harriet with that arrow. It was easy, Patsy. What? She merely leaned out of her own window and pushed it shut with a clothes prop. A clothes prop? Yeah, she took it upstairs early in the evening. And when she was finished with it, she threw it out into the yard. But Nick, Miss Harriet's window was locked. Yeah, but you remember when we broke into the room just after Miss Harriet was killed? It was Miss Abby who rushed to the window to see whether it was locked. What? You mean she locked it then? She did. Well, I'll be darned. And right in front of us. Oh, it was a clever scheme, all right. Oh, <laughs> But why were you so sure that Gerald hadn't come down that hidden stairway and murdered his aunt? Because I knew Miss Abby was lying when she pretended to see someone in the closet. How did you know? Because if anyone had come into the closet from the hidden stairway, the secret door would have creaked so loudly that we couldn't have missed hearing it. Oh, gee. She must have planned that murder for months in advance. Oh, I'm sure she did. But she lost her head when she tried to kill you. Oh. Since she couldn't cover that up, it would have been a bad mistake. Well, I'll say. Not only for her, but for me. Thanks for not letting her make it, Nick. You're quite welcome, Betsy. I'd hate to have to break in a new assistant. What? Why, you... <laughs> can you tell us something about the adventure new post-war old Dutch cleanser is going to bring us next week, Nick? Indeed I can, Mike. Next week we're going to meet a brand new version of an old horse and buggy racket. 
It was so streamlined that it murdered three people. And the only clue to the solution was the fact that a lot of people suddenly started wearing new glasses. Well, that certainly sounds interesting. What do you call the adventure, Nick? I call it The Case of the Failing Eyes. Nick Carter, Master Detective, presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company, is produced and directed by Jock McGregor, and is copyright by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Today's script was written by Jim Parsons. Original music is played by Henry Silverne. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. This is Michael Fitzmaurice saying, when minutes count, use new post-war old Dutch cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.